Like you were miserable when you were out there straight. <laughs> People go through great lengths to get high, you know that? In fact, they're willing to die, and they are. Until they met the most high. Then that was the greatest high. And you're still saying hi. Every morning, hi. <laughs> you say hi to him and bye to the devil. <laughs> oh, glory. Yes, thank you, Master. Revelation 12. We need a revelation. Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven and keep drinking. Nobody leaves here straight. <laughs> Nothing worse than a straight Christian. The world needs, every human being needs to walk around with a t-shirt that says, who told you that? The world will change. Who told you that? Who told you to lie? Cheat. Who told you to fear? <laughs> Glory. Psalm 127. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. What's the first word? Unless, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who built it. Unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who builds it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. Sorrows is associated with emotional. You know, for battling for the truth, as we're always battling for the truth, one of the things the enemy is going to do is utilize your emotions. Humanistic emotions. It doesn't mean that we don't have them. It means we should have control over them. Like anger. 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 That's a multiple. <laughs> that means big. <laughs> Hallelujah. How about vanity? Anger, hatred, all the other stuff. Jealousy, rage. Unless the Lord builds the house. Now, how many know you're the house? You're the temple. In other words, he's building the temple and a purpose in this temple. But he builds it with eternal purpose. Man builds with personal purpose. That's why it's called vain. So there's an exchange always made. So you and I are always battling for the truths. Why? Because it's God's truth that builds the house. So in this is we're, we're allowing God to build the house so we are co-laboring with him as he's given me a new truth to build this place. And it's supposed to be a place for his dwelling. The moment we slip out of line and begin to build in our own strength, it causes problems. The worst thing, again, we could do is be successful in the wrong assignment. Amen. Amen. So we must allow the Lord to build. That means we got to be led by the Lord. Everything's got to be timed. And it's not our time. And building the house, there can be no anxiousness. There can be no fear. There can be no emotional building. It's truth building. We don't build by emotion. We build by truth. We do nothing that says because it feels good. In fact, most of the time, you're doing stuff. I mean, even before, man, you're coming together to church and so forth, some, most of the time you don't feel right. Man, you know what? I mean, we know we need to get in God's presence because we know where everything will change. So we fight to get in God's presence. But what's in his presence? Truth. 
So there's a battle for truth all the time. Remember, this earth is ruled by Satan's kingdom. It says we don't fight flesh, flesh and blood, but powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places, demons, and individuals that are demonized. And boy, they like to shoot out the serpent, don't they? Out of their tongue. That's why that's called a serpent tongue. People pierce their tongues. Their eyes change. You know? <laughs> First Corinthians 3. Again, man builds with personal purpose. It's called vain. When God builds, he builds it for an eternal purpose. And this is how the enemy loves to play with us because you can start building, cooperating with God and, and building on truth and the next thing you know, you're building on emotion. That's why it's so important to stay connected, stay filled, and stay dead. That's why the word says, man plans and God laughs. <laughs> Don't plan your destiny, you'll be messed up. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 9. Let's speak it together. If we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field. You are God's what? Building. According to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he what? Builds on it. In other words, we have to be very careful that we don't not emotionally build, but we build with truth. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work on it is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit dwells in you? Here's a warning. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is what? Holy. For which temple you are? Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul, Apollos, Cephas, or the world of life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Again, we we're talking about something very powerful here because he says, man, you're going to need some wisdom. You're going to need wisdom to cooperate with God. Now, wisdom tells us what to do. Understanding tells us how to do it. But it must come from above, not from the earth. See, you are building, you are cooperating with the building of an eternal temple, a dwelling place for God. You must be very careful of the things you touch and agree with and that you're in time with God. If you are out of time, you'll begin to build emotionally because it feels good. It may look good, and there may even be a purpose for what you're thinking about doing, but it might not be God's time for it. So we can never go before God. We must allow him to lead us. That's why it's called being led by the Spirit. Amen? Because he is the master builder. In Ephesians chapter 2.
So there's an area where you and I must cooperate with the master builder, the Holy Spirit. And the price is cooperation and humility. Cooperation in what? Humility. I'm going to tell you something that one of the things that the Holy Spirit loves to build with you is when an individual has a grateful heart. If you maintain an attitude of gratitude, he likes that. If you're still blaming everyone, this, that, and whatever, he'll, he'll step right away. And you know what you'll do? He'll allow you to build on emotion instead of truth. How many people have done things? I don't want any hands. I'm just saying. How many people have done things out of emotion? Bought, purchased the wrong thing, married the wrong person, married out of God's time, purchased out of God's time, done whatever because it was emotional instead of truth. In Ephesians 2 and verse 19. So we must battle for the truth all the time. And there is a battle. Now there's a battle against you for you to maintain the truth. Because the enemy's trying to steal your truth all the time. Ephesians 2, 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but what? Fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, and whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, and whom you are also being built together for a what? Dwelling place of God where? In the spirit. So it's not in the physical. It's not in the natural. It's in the spirit. You may have a physical body, but the temple that's being within you is an eternal one. Does everybody get this? You are a carrier of heaven. You are a carrier of and the Holy Spirit is the builder. And he's always trying to build. And anything that gets, has to be repaired, just like if you own a house. When the air condition goes out, you got to get it repaired. Amen? When whatever, the plumbing's leaking, you got to get it repaired. <laughs> we won't go. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so when, you, uh, when you're sick, you got to get what? Repaired. So the Holy Spirit's always trying to keep us in a place because the body, the physical body, is self-sustaining. It heals itself because that's how God created it. But you've got to give it the right building blocks for it to heal itself. That means there's certain fruits you got to eat. Look at even when you've fallen, God can heal in multiple ways. He can do a miracle and heal you instantly, or he can bring you through a process. I've been healed Instantly, multiple times. But then there's times when he brings me through a process. He says, I want you to eat this. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And there was healing. But again, that's being led. Does everybody understand it? That's why we must be led. And believe me, there was times when he would tell me, go to the hospital. And I would say, no. Heal me. You're going to die. Hallelujah. <laughs> then I obeyed. <laughs> Actually, my wife made me go. <laughs> she didn't want a dead body in the living room. <laughs> Somebody just dropped me off at the local field. Anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So we are a holy temple in the Lord, a dwelling place for God in the Spirit. In the Spirit. Okay, that means that you're connected, right? You're first disconnected from the world and connected to the throne of glory. So you can't be connected to the throne of glory without being disconnected from the world. When you are sensing emotional stuff, that means that there's more draw and connect to the world. Again, I'm not saying that you don't have emotions, but you've got to have control over them. And the more that you take control over emotion, you'll realize that they won't even get near you. 
they start to fade away. And the only emotion you have is peace, joy, and righteousness. And that's what you live on, and that's what you thrive on, because that's in the Holy Spirit. And that's where you live. And the more you practice it, the more it becomes automatic. But the problem is, is without practice, then it don't become automatic. And it doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. But when you make a mistake, don't get emotionally messed up. Oh, God, I made a mistake. And go bonkers and go back in the flesh and in the soul and get all emotional for three days. Step out of it. It's called a puddle of affliction. Just take one step to the right and step right out of it. Amen? Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2. And don't go into the but ministry. But, 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 but. That's a moped, right? Remember a rice burner is me, 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 me. And a Harley is what? Come out, come out, come out. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2. But is always associated with excuse. But. But what? But nothing. We're the head, not the tail. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But you are a what? You are a what? A chosen generation. Everyone's saying, I'm chosen. Remember, God chose you. You didn't choose him. After he chose you, I would hope you would choose him. Amen. And stay there. It's not, it wasn't an emotional choice, you know. Because peace, joy, and righteousness is God's love. There's no such thing as love at first sight. It's called lust at first sight. Love is built. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Now, you may hear God say something to you, but love is built. Love is trust. And love is death to yourself. See, when self is first, ain't no more love. People could become a lustafarian. <clears throat> Verse 9 again, let's speak it. But you are what? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may what? Proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous love. Who once what? We're not a people, but are now a people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims to abstain from fleshly lusts, which were against the soul and also against the truth. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Again, we are a royal priesthood of proclaiming his praise with an attitude of gratitude, gratefulness, maintaining good works because we're being built by the Lord. Amen? We're always allowing God to build us, to build whatever he needs to build. Not by emotion, not by fear, not by anger, not by need. Because the Lord is our shepherd. We will not what? Lack. We won't want. So if he's truly building and you're allowing him to build, there's something that's happening all the time. Trust, 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 trust. Is everybody all right? Third John. Third John, verse 2.
Let's speak it. Verse 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. That means your soul must be converted with what? Truth. Not emotion. Truth. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the what? The truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Wow. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. Truth is in us. We're to walk in truth. We're to love truth. We're to be workers of the truth, submitters to the truth. Only the foundation that God is building in you, on you, and through you is truth. See, when the foundation becomes contaminated or defiled, you begin to stumble. One of the things that the enemy uses to penetrate our foundation and compromise truth is emotion. You're going to probably hear this till we go home. Because there's going to be a lot of emotion going on. Especially when people start seeing stuff that's going to be coming. You've got to remember that the, the demonic forces have technology. Does everybody understand it? How many of y'all know they have spacecraft? What do you think is going to really turn the hearts of mankind when things really start to happen? I mean, many people have been visited by aliens, abducted, seen UFOs, whatever. You know what that does? Emotionally messes them up. <laughs> Can you imagine seeing an, a, 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 a spacecraft that's like a mile big coming in believe me they're going to do all kinds of things to blow mankind away so they can move them from truth they're going to still try to promote the darwin stuff see they still trying to prove that you came from an amoeba they just don't know who created the amoeba you came from breath God spoke you in. Amen? He took something out of nothing and spoke you in. He predestined you to be here at this time. To see a great move of his and see a great move against the enemy and exposure of corruption and destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truth in us, that we're to walk in truth, workers of the truth. And our foundation must be constantly on truth. Truth is your guide, no matter what it is. You cannot compromise it. If you compromise it, you can be in trouble. 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Let's speak it together. Therefore, do what? Gird up the loins of your what? Mind. In other words, protect your thoughts. Monitor your thoughts. Be sober, which means alert. And rest your hope fully on the grace, the plan of God that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your what? Conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves 
throughout the time of your stay in what? The fear of the Lord. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold or from aimless con conduct received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in his last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have what? Purified your souls in obeying the what? Truth. In other words, you have purified your emotions. You've taken them over. Why? Because truth now controls. Truth now controls your soul. Nothing else. See, again, there's a battle within you too. There's an emotional battle. It's always against truth. Truth is light. Remember, we live in a place where it's dark. We live in a dark world. The only thing that brings light is Christ. That's it. Other than that, everything is dark. That's why people are blinded. Amen? Amen? Because to them it's dark, even though they don't understand it, but they are spiritually blinded in this dark world. Why? Because it's corrupted and it's fallen. But it's going to change. Everybody okay? It says, um, verse 20, For indeed he was foreordained before the foundation of the Lord was manifested in his last times for you who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope is in God, since you have purified your souls and obeying the truth for the, through the what? Spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a what? Pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, is the word of God truth? Yes. Which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is grass and all the glory of man is a flower of grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. So the word of the Lord stands forever. Even the Bible says that the word is above his name. Because his word, his name was created by the word. So in this, his word is true. So your foundation that you are standing on is, must maintain always truth. We cannot allow our foundation to be contaminated. So if you're standing on truth, there's something you must be doing all the time. Trust. See, so the enemy wants to try and break your truth so that you mistrust. He always wants to get you in a place of mistrust instead of trust. So what happens is when something happens quickly, you may get blindsided with some information, whatever, and it may affect you emotionally. But it's what you do with that emotion. Amen? You have to make sure that you stand on that truth because you're trusting. But if you, get, if you compromise or sway from that truth at all and you allow your foundation to be contaminated, you stop trusting. Then you find another way. And this is where the enemy uses to build an emotion when God is trying to build on truth. Does everybody get this? And this is what's happening globally right now. I mean, it's intensified like I've never seen it before. We're watching emotional, messed up people. They're getting more and more on antidepressants. And of course, you know, the side effect of that is suicide. But they don't want to tell you that. It's a small print. People are becoming more angry, hatred, violent, jealous, fearful. They're becoming more emotionally controlled. And that's what the enemy loves to do. He likes to emotionally control people. with through with deception. Amen? So we see here that truth will purify, convert your souls to align with the truth of the Word of God. 
Your identity is in his presence. Remember that? It's written in the truth of your foundation. I'm going to say that again. We know that our identity is in God, but it's written in the truth of your foundation. When your truth is main, when your foundation is maintained by truth, your identity is written there, and it is connected to who you are. That's why people fall and compromise, go back to drugs and so forth and all kinds of other things, go back to, they run back to the world for fulfillment. Why? Because they're looking for an emotional fulfillment. Because truth is no longer fulfilling them. And this is where there's that process of conversion. The longer you stay out there under darkness, the harder it is. The more process you've got to go through. It doesn't come like this back. You may think it does, but it isn't going to. Because when you trample God's truth and his trust, there's a process to get reconnected again. Amen. Everybody all right? James chapter 3. Verse 13. You know, you, when you really begin to step back and look about globally, if you get to watch the news or anything, you see, I mean, you can just see things. That people are running around trying to find out who they are. They're trying to connect with something that identifies with them. The problem is, is they're connecting to so many other things that identifies with carnality, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And, and it's a false fulfillment. It's temporary. Not being reconnected back to God. In verse 13, let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Do you see this? These are things that he's warning us. He said, look, at this is what's going to happen. You will, you will allow, you will come against the truth yourself if you start self-seeking, selfish ambitions. If you start building the house instead of allowing God to build it. If you start emotionally building. He said, what's going to happen? You will lie against the truth. In other words, you will compromise it. You will cover In fact, you will, you will reject some of it because it won't be according to how you feel your plan should be played out. Verse 15, it says, This wisdom does not descend from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, Confusion and every evil thing are there. Confusion and every evil thing are there. Believe me, when you fall into confusion, every evil thing is there trying to grab hold, trying to reconnect back to you, trying to emotionally get you to build again emotionally instead of truth and trying to exchange truth for emotion. But at the wisdom that is from above is first what? pure. It's pure. It's holy. It's pure. It's truth. Then what? Peaceable. No anxiousness. No fear. No anxiety. No need to have to do it right now. The only thing you need to do right now is repent. Gentle. Hello? Gentle? Willing to yield. Full of mercy. Good fruits. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. That is the wisdom that is from above. If there's anything different, it's from beneath. Does everybody get it? Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who what? Make peace. 
Many lie against the truth, living on a foundation of contaminated foundation with lies and deception of selfish ambitions, and they're still building on it. You know what happens when people lie? Because truth has been exposed. <laughs> you know who got caught doing this? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. Got to defend themselves. You know, when you're walking in the truth, you ain't got to defend yourself at all. <laughs> Why? Because you know God knows. You know that God knows what's going on. Unless the Lord tells you that you're supposed to expose something. Remember, demonic influence is, is temporary wisdom. It's temporary. But when truth exposes a person, they usually lie. John 14. John 14. Battling for the truth. John 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, what's the word believe mean? Follow. The works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And what are you, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. If you love me, keep my what? Commandments. That's the stipulation. And I'll pray to the Father, and he will give you what? Another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of who? Truth. Whom the world cannot receive. The world can't receive the spirit of truth. That's why they're still in darkness. Because truth is light and it's life. Because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And a, little, and a little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, and you will live also. Wow. The spirit of truth the world cannot receive. You must be born again of the spirit, washed by the blood, to be able to receive the truth. Now, that's a stipulation. Think about that. But once you've received the truth... And the Spirit starts building a foundation for you to stand on in the truth so that you can trust the truth. Does everybody get it? See, your trust is, yes, we trust the Lord, but isn't he known as the Lord of truth? He is the truth. So when you're trusting the truth, you're trusting the Lord. Trusting the truth. You're standing on the foundation of truth. It's being built by the Spirit of truth. And the truth is making you free because you're living in it, you're practicing it, and you're executing it, and you're staying free. And John 16. But it doesn't mean that God's not trying to convict them. Amen? Amen. Remember, the blood always goes before the Spirit. So there's got to be repentance and the Spirit makes way. So even when you and I blow it, the Spirit will back up until we repent and the blood always cleanses away for the Spirit to follow. John 16, verse 12. Let's speak it. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Why? Because I couldn't comprehend them or interpret what God was trying to say. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will what? He's going to guide you into what? Some truth, partial truth, all truth. So you think it's important to be filled with the spirit? You think it's important to be connected? He will guide you into all truth. 
For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. So is he going to tell you that there's a net or a trap set for you? Amen. Is he going to tell you, don't do that? Don't go there? Don't do this? Why? Yeah, because he's bringing you all truth. He's going to tell you, don't believe that? Yeah. He's going to tell you that's a lie? He's going to tell you that person is lying? It doesn't mean you have to call on and say, you're a liar. And you're going to hell. Believe me, there's many, many times when people are talking to the Holy Spirit will say, that person's lying. Or, he's, he's, uh, or they're exaggerating. Or they're out of God's time or whatever. But I don't get into all of that. Unless the Holy Spirit says, sit them down and tell them. But you know what? Everybody must work out their own salvation and run the course. How many of y'all learn by your mistakes? Snap. <laughs> We're supposed to learn by them, amen? <laughs> Not repeat them. <laughs> Glory. Now let's go a little further. It says here that in verse 14, he will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare to who? You. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare to you. So is God trying to get us something? Everything. Everything. The, the, the problem is, is that when he's trying, when, just before it's getting released to you, the enemy starts distracting you. And a person gets out of position, and the blessing comes, and they miss it. The spirit of truth will build the foundation of truth by leading you into all truth to experience truth, which is also the light of truth, so you can see. Truth, you are fighting, you are battling for truth all the time and maintaining it. And Proverbs 3. If you're not fighting for the truth, then you're exchanging it. If you're not putting truth in practice, then you're losing it. Proverbs 3. Battle for truth. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Let's speak it together. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace that will what? Add to you. So his commands and his law, is that truth or lies? Truth. Verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart and find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust, trust, totally resting upon Savior truth. Does everybody got it? That's what trust is. You are totally resting upon the Savior's truth. That's called trust. Now, if you can't trust God, if you can't trust the truth, God can't trust you. I can't trust someone that don't trust me. And you can't trust someone that don't trust you. Of course, trust is what? Earned. Amen. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with what? When you feel like it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean uh, not... On your what? Your own understanding. Your own understanding is always associated with emotion. His understanding is associated with truth. In all of your ways, do what? Acknowledge him. Keep him before you. Set him before you. 
Talk to him. Find out if this is pleasing to him. And he shall direct your what? Path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be what? Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening or the correction of the Lord, nor detest his what? Correction. For whom the Lord loves, he does what? He corrects as a father, the son in whom he delights. Trust, lean, fellowship with the spirit of truth. Why? Because your foundation is constantly being renewed. Your foundation is constantly being renewed. It's being renewed and refreshed. Because that's what renewing is. It's refreshing. Your foundation is constantly being refreshed with what? Truth. Does everybody understand? Proverbs 30. Verse 5. Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of God is what? Pure. He is a shield to those who what? Trust in Him. If you put your trust in Him, now that means you're putting your trust in truth. Do not add to His words or His truth. Amen? Lest He rebuke you and you be found a what? A liar. Two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. Remove what? Falsehood and lies far from me. This was a request. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. He was honest. He said, you know, the word of God is pure. It's truth. It's a shield. Psalm 52. Standing on truth and battling for truth. Psalm 52. Starting at verse 1. Let's speak it. Why do you boast in evil, almighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction. Like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You love evil more than good. Lying rather than speaking righteousness. You love all devouring words. You deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy you forever. You shall, he shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous shall see and fear and shall laugh at him, saying, Here is a man who did not make God his what? Strength. But trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive, tree in the house of God. That means oiled up. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name for it is good. Ooh. Again, we will be seeing a lot of f f lies, false truths, false trust. The enemy's trying to get people to sway away. And remember, trust is totally resting upon the Savior's truth, isn't it? Psalm 31. The battle is on. Psalm 
Psalm 31, starting at verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my what? Strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. I have hated those who regard useless idols, but I trust. You see the word truth in what? Trust. Truth and trust. I hated those who regard useless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have considered my trouble. You have known my soul in adversities and have not shut me up into the hand of my enemies. For you have set my feet in a wide place. Proverbs 28. You are trusting on the truth and in the truth. Because your foundation is being built by truth. And the Lord of truth is building it. Twenty-eight, twenty-five. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. He who is a a proud heart does what? Stirs up strife. But he who what? Trust in the Lord will what? They'll be prospered. Yeah. He who trusts in his own heart is a what? He's a fool. But whoever walks wisely will be what? Delivered. That means submissively. He who gives the poor to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many what? Curses. When the wicked arise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. I believe the righteous is going to increase tremendously. And I'm going to close at John 8 just for a reminder. John chapter 8. And uh, let's see here. I think it's ver verse 42. Yeah, verse 42. And Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. But I proceeded, for I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word, which is what? Truth. You are of your father the what? Devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, but we stand in the truth. That's why we have an eternal father. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you, are not, you do not hear because you are not of God. In other words, they've been disconnected. Amen. And we're seeing this all over. All over. People are emotionally building. Exchanging truth. Contaminating their foundations. Going back and touching things of false fulfillments. So you and I got to constantly step out of that. Maintain the, the area of a foundation of truth and trust. He says all things work to the good to those who what? 
love him and are called according to his purpose. But to love him means that you obey him. You're willing to wait. That's the area of trust. See, people who can't wait don't trust. There is no trust. They're truly, they're totally not resting upon the truth. They believe that God can't do it sometimes. When there isn't anything he can't do. We just got to sometimes wait because waiting is the process of death. And waiting is the process of endurance so that you can trust. Because when he comes through with it, it's like, whoa. Other than that, you miss it. Anybody have ever had prayer answered? Was it encouraging? Yes. Everybody has prayer answered. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's wait. Sometimes it's you know better than that. Hello? <laughs> but that's called relationship. You're building a relationship with truth. And you're battling to maintain that relationship of truth. But the enemy will try to compromise it and try and exchange it and try and contaminate you with emotion. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we pray tonight, Lord, that what has been imparted in us will come to practice. That we remember all of our experiences, Lord, but we stand on the truth. And we ask that you'll clean our foundation of all lies, compromise, and anything that would cause contamination to us. Let truth be our foundation. And let the spirit of truth continue to build so we don't labor in vain. And grant us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to discern the strategies and attacks and influences of the emotional power of the enemy. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.